150 years ago, the American Civil War was an unstoppable force affecting all Americans, North and South. It was the moment when the American Republic would be redefined through sacrifice. The war would spur the rise of America's industrial system, and it would be the biggest event in the life of the people who lived through it. It's hard for us now to fully appreciate the day-to-day -day reality of life as it was lived 150 years ago. Those who lived it are gone, but tangible pieces of the past are very near to us. One of the ways we connect with the past is through objects that tell a story. There are people today who dedicate themselves to pursuing, uncovering, and rescuing artifacts that would otherwise be lost. Hi, I'm Robin Smith, and welcome to the Civil War Uncovered. In this episode, we're in search of a Union Cavalry winter camp located somewhere outside of Stevensburg, Virginia. Research indicates the site was used by the 1st United States Cavalry in the winter of 1863 to 1864. Our team is led by David Shack Shackleton, recently retired from 20 years of service in the United States Marine Corps. David has led several successful cross-country gold prospecting expeditions to Northern California and has written about his expeditions in mining publications. For the last five years, David has become deeply involved in relic hunting and metal detecting. David is joined by Bob, Relic Bob Painter, a retired federal mining safety inspector who has spent the last 39 years enjoying the hobby of metal detecting in Central Virginia. Bob has shared his adventures in many articles in metal detecting magazines and has organized large-scale metal detecting events. Let's join our team in the field. The main relic man. Welcome to beautiful Culpeper County, Virginia. Yeah. Looks like we're getting ready to get into some cow pastures, huh? No, horses. Yeah, even better. Yeah. <laughs> you going with us, buddy? Are you allowed? Yeah, you can help. Come on, come on, hurry up. You can help us dig. Normal. You're running in. Oh, 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 that. Deep special double D fixed. Yeah. Deep I've special. never come out of that, no matter what. It's been working so well for me, I'm afraid to touch it. Well, since you're here, I've already found my relic, so I can leave. Oh, oh. Now, Dave, David, I'm going to put you in the best spot I know where the majority of the relics should be and have been, and that's right in this area here. Especially since you've got a GPX, you can hunt this tall grass, which isn't tall now. It was the last time we were here. What's the lucky number tonight? Take your pick. One through 256. If you're within 10, I'll buy you dinner. I say 219. 139. Nobody gets anything. Okay, we're in uh, Culpeper County, and there was no uh, no battle or action in this particular area. However, the the uh, first U.S. infantry, first U.S. cavalry, camped here. Uh, they camped all around this area, and uh, everything found in this field pretty much is uh, cavalry related. Uh, carbine bullets, uh, U.S. Uh, bit bosses, uh, eagle buttons with C's in the middle of them, that kind of stuff. So we'll see what we can find. I love this place. If you notice in the background, Bob is already digging his first hole. That's a nice tone there.
You ever seen those uh, moms in the mall with the kids attached to the tether? It's pretty much what I feel like right now. Minus the kids. That's a deep one. One nail, about eight inches down. I knew all those hours playing Tetris were gonna pay off. Look at that. Let's try down there a little bit. Maybe we'll find some, uh, some relics down there. How about a tip to help you find more with your metal detector? Hi, I'm Kevin Hoagland from Mine Lab Americas, and I'm here today with the folks from the Civil War Uncovered to bring you a few technical tips for better using your metal detector. You know, a lot of people will mess things up on setting up a detector, but if you mess up the ground balance, you'll miss targets. That's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. Now, the easiest way to ground balance this machine is the first time to use the toggle switch. And what I'd like for you to do is on the 5000 and the 4800, uh -huh. the ground balance toggle is the first one behind the coil wire. So okay. it's very easy to find. Take your finger, set it against the coil wire, and then okay. come back to that switch. Okay. Feel that toggle, mm -hmm. start pumping the machine up and down, about one to five inches off the ground. Now flip that from the fixed mode to the tracking mode while you're pumping it up and down. Now you'll hear the ground balance st settle down. Yeah. Actually, this machine was basically already balanced to begin with. Go ahead and stop, flip it back into the fixed mode, your ground balance. From that point on, you can use the green button. Mm. So as you're out hunting throughout the course of the day, if you start to hear a little bit of noise within your threshold, just stop, pump the machine up and down, press the green button, press and hold the green button. Once the ground balance or once the machine settles out, and it's the same sound going up and going down, release and continue to hunt. Good metal detectors learn all they can about the gear Civil War soldiers would have had. After digging up artifacts, they use their knowledge like a detective to identify what they find. After 150 years, it's usually only the metal that remains. Eventually, even the metal itself will disintegrate. <laughs> Kevin Dalton has been a reenactor for many years, portraying both Union and Confederate cavalry. Today he shows us some of the gear a trooper of the 1st U.S. Cavalry would have had in the winter of 1863. This is a typical United States Cavalry, 1860s United States Cavalry bit. Um, modern day horse owners are a bit appalled at this bit because it's so large, so thick, and it has that large curve in it. That was to basically give the horse the command that you want him to stop and stop now. This was your bedroll. It would be uh, rolled up as such this and put uh, onto the saddle secured by these straps. Uh, consisted basically of a, something to put on the ground between you and the ground or a shelter hat that could be set up with uh, sticks and, and uh, tree branches, limbs and so forth. Your blanket any kind of change of clothing that you need or have. Keep in mind that when things got kind of uh, uh, chaotic in battle and you went, you were dismounted, which cavalrymen were oftentimes dismounted for the most effectiveness, um, and you went back to the command to horse, it was great if you could find the horse you came on, but that wasn't always the case. Most of the time, if there was a horse there and there's uh, uh, an enemy column coming right down your throat, you hop on that horse, everybody gets on a horse and sorts it out later. Can I rock it in? Yes, the lever right. You leave it right where you found it. That's an old joke. <laughs> well, this is the last hole I dug. 
and you can see it right here. It's going to be a button of some kind. It's a coat size button. And this ground makes things really fragile. And it appears to be a standard eagle button. I don't see a C in the chest. No, it's got lines in the shield. Standard coat size eagle button. Something all diggers should carry is something to put and buttons in to protect them. Let's see how Shaq is doing. Tell you what, digging in this field has been a treat. Out here in this field, we're getting good six, eight inches every time we stick the shovel in the ground. It kind of spoils you. Looks like a decent target down here. Well, sounds like it's in the sidewall here. That's a piece of glass. I'll definitely slow down now, scraping the hole with my hands, knowing that there's shards of glass in here. Wants me to keep digging. And you can see the glass in here. You gotta be really careful when you're digging. Uh, you can see how far down that is, probably about six inches from the top. There's a piece of glass in here pretty large chunk, uh, like an amber greenish color, but it's thick and old and very sharp. It's already broken. I don't think I broke it with the shovel, but you really got to watch your hands when you're going in and out of these, these uh, holes. You gotta be really careful. It's a, uh, another hunk of lead, partially melted. Somehow it looks like it's in the shape of a shoe almost. We'll see what else is down here. There was something else making a pretty, <clears throat> pretty good tone around that bottle. It's pretty loud. Now I'm starting to see a little bit of iron stain right down in here. You can see it right here. A little streak in the soil <clears throat> down there. Looks like something uh, has been rusting in place about 16 inches down. And there it is right there, sticking out of the soil sticking out of the side. Let's see if I can free it up a little bit with a shovel instead of pulling it out. Oh, that's big. Here's another piece down there. And there's our target again. This time we can see a lot more of the area. Let's see if I can come this way. Nice and gently. You know, saw it moving there. There's part of it. It does look like a gun tool. It's got a little wrench opening on one side. And there's still other stuff down here. Another big piece of iron right here and more of that amber colored glass. This is a pretty big piece of, pretty big piece of iron right there. It's making that GPX 5000 go crazy. There's another, there's a couple things stuck in this clump here. Big ring, another one of those tools. Looks like it not connected. Oh yeah, it is, it's got, look at that. Well, I think maybe a piece of a stirrup or something. A bit. A bit. Uh, like that, yeah? How's it look? A bit? Yep. And uh, doesn't look too good on me, I imagine, but anything's an improvement, I guess. So that was down about a foot. That's pretty neat. This has been an interesting hole. A couple of uh, pieces of iron. Looks like a, a bit for an unruly horse. Lots of glass. Hey, Bob, come check this out. This is havoc to the hands, unpro oh, yeah. unprotected. Oh, yeah. That's part of a trace, I think. And this, uh, this was down about 14 inches. 
Well, that's the other part of this, yeah. Yeah, it's this side. Genuine Civil War U.S. Cavalry bit. How cool, name, is, how cool is that? That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a name for that kind of bit, too, but I forget what it is. I think it's the kind so they can drink water. Oh, okay, okay. This was a cool thing. It was, it come up and I thought I had a bullet, but then I got to looking at it and it's a whittled on bullet. You can see where he's yeah. carving a piece out there and he's flattening one side. Soldiers shaved it off with his knife. If you ever want to try something that's interesting, try to carve a bullet with a knife. You have to have that knife razor, razor sharp. Sure. We were just talking about that earlier, about the different chess pieces that the guys would make and the different, you know. Yeah. And they're highly collectible. I mean. Oh, everyone is different. Yeah. I mean, through this field all day. Yeah, it's a wonderful you field. Find all the stuff I find. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> this will be button number three. Yeah, I'd say, that's nice. <laughs> I was hoping we'd find one with a big old C in the middle of it. Generally, the... No, that's a regular eagle coat button. When you find one with a C, it's usually a higher quality button and will have gold on it. The gilted buttons are high, higher quality. C for cavalry. You have what? C for cavalry, you have infantry, A for I, artillery. A for artillery, and R is an older button for riflemen. Or, they had some R buttons for riflemen. Huh. And those were uh, typically in the center of the eagle button. They yes. Were tra traditionally uh, federal. A, a shield know. in the middle of the eagle. And on a common eagle button, there'll be lines like right. a shield. Sure. And instead of the lines, there'll be an R, A, C. Uh, there's an older button called a, a Voltigeers button with a big V. Wow. That's a, that's a pre-Civil War button. Okay. That uh, some say the... There were no Voltigeers during the Civil War, so some say the Virginia troops took those buttons and used them and let the V represent Virginia. Oh, I'm going to guess dinner. <laughs> Go ahead and get it out of there, David. See what you think. Well, let me see what it is first. I know what it is. I have no clue what this is. It's a watch key. Oh, okay. Winds up a pocket yeah, watch. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, you can see the little uh, the tip on the end of it. And that's a pretty good one. It's complete. These guys like to collect these, too. I mean, they're, they're not very expensive. Some people collect them. There's different sizes and shapes. What a cool place this is. I love it. That's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching, and we hope you'll join us for other episodes of The Civil War Uncovered. Coming up this season, you'll meet the other members of our team as they hunt various sites like artillery camps overlooking strategic river crossings, infantry camps along the railroad, more cavalry camp relic hunting, a site where a canal boat of ammunition exploded, opposing battle lines, and lots more. We'll leave you with some more of today's hunt. Look at the scenery. This is beautiful. This really is a neat property. Uh, Really had a good time, Bob. Thanks for having us out here. Sure. It's been a pleasure. You haven't got a glass in your hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we walking out with the sunset or what? A bunch of old men? Isn't that old cool? Man, one really old man. One really old <laughs> relic Bob. <laughs> <laughs> one old relic Bob. <laughs> if you'd like to see more from our team, visit the Civil War Uncovered.com.